Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at EX Hero Academy the Second. If you're a diligent viewer of the channel, not that I'm trying to shame anybody else, you'll know that EX is uh, shorthand for sponsored. Hashtag ad. Hashtag shill. All of which will appear in the video title description. Tags, tax form declarations, etc. etc. It's a sponsored video. Sponsored by Robot Entertainment for the release of Hero Academy 2, and it's a good fit! Because if you're a longtime viewer, you'll know that I actually did play Hero Academy 1 uh, way back in 2012. Me and Malf did a video on Hero... I think we actually... I did a Let's Look At, and then we also did a video where we played multiplayer against one another. So when Hero Academy 2 rolled around, I was like, absolutely, I'll give it a shot. It's a... it's a little bit like a CCG mixed with a turn-based tactics game might be a good way to describe it but this one is more CCG if I remember correctly the original Hero Academy um, was not quite as much of like it didn't have as much of let's say a Hearthstone influence maybe that makes sense so they've uh, reconfigured it here I've been playing for three or four hours so far and I've been playing online as well it's been soft launched in Canada it comes out January 17th everywhere iOS Android PC when you get your version, it won't say desktop early access build here. Try not to be so envious of me. Um, the principal thing that I had uh, as a sticking point with the original Hero Academy was actually that it played a little bit like correspondence chess, which was awesome for people that were on the go. Let's just queue up here, by the way, and I'll explain the game as we play it. Um, so the way that it would work is you would do your turn, commit it, and then your opponent within the next like 24 hours would reply with their turn. And again, it was all well and good for fostering a certain sense of like, uh, you know, you're having a great time with one another and hey, I haven't t spoken to you in so long. But sometimes when you're playing with somebody like Malf, who is, uh, might I describe as a little overly patient, overly methodical, you end up taking these like four hour long games. This works much faster. Games tend to be about 10 or 15 minutes long. This is my first time actually playing this deck. It's from the Warden faction, so I might be terrible. Um, and I apologize to Finn Dralnu, who is going to have to deal with me taking a little bit of time on my turns. I'll be the Malf here. Um, as we look at our cards here. So we have energy, we also have a power. We can summon a wisp with no action points for two mana. Passive, buildings have plus one hearts. Okay. Um, however, I mean, I guess they're at full now, but we can summon a couple of things on this turn. We have two creatures and also an ability. The ability is a root. So we're gonna summon two creatures here, and I'm, I'm so sorry to my uh, opponent here. On my turn, or when my turn is over, let me explain. Okay, so we have one attack on each of these creatures and two life. Life can be healed. There's also armor. Armor replenishes at the start of any given turn. Your goal in any game of Hero Academy 2 is to use your roster of heroes, um, which are these fantastical creatures that you see before you, uh, or including the Impaler, who is actually absolutely gonna destroy me here. Um, we'll destroy this one anyway. Um, to destroy the enemy crystals and avoid having your own crystals destroyed. This is a terrible start to this match for me. <laughs> I should have. He's using the deck I use. It's not fair. Um, so we have three crystals three life, seven life, seven life, seven life, three life, seven life. They've taken damage because this unit is something called a fanfare. So whenever this hero is summoned, um, it deals one damage to everything on the board, and there's a lot of abilities like that that we'll see. So we have six energy this turn. You get five per turn. Viridian, ranged. Fanfare, ally heroes gain one life. Eulogy, ally heroes gain two attack. So again, fanfare is what happens when you come out, and eulogy is what happens when you die. Let's check out our other abilities real quick. Flatten. Knock out a hero with two or less HP. Can't do it to this guy. Um, we could summon a wisp with zero AP. Oh no, they're <laughs> they're getting on to me. Um, I don't really want to summon. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna summon a wisp. I'm gonna play it a little slow here, and then I'll pass turn. This is not a good start for me. Um, my thinking though is I don't really want to summon uh, an expensive creature on this turn that has fanfare that buffs our other creatures or our other heroes, as the case may be, um, because. You know, you, you don't get much value out of that fanfare. Mind you, it would be nice to get just like a, a some kind of value out of this turn. Especially as I'm getting my butt kicked. But, you know, the, uh, the um, deck that we have here is a little bit more of almost like a druid archetype. 
You know, we, we place a little slower and then we ramp up quickly eventually. Hopefully is the idea. So by the way, when you summon a creature, like I think we really should summon Terminus this turn, which is a 5 attack, 8 uh, life unit. When we summon that, we only have like these three rows or columns that we can put them in. As we destroy crystals, we'll get more space and board control becomes a little bit more uh, important as you encroach into each other's territory. But I'm, I'm definitely losing from like the um, the space warfare right now. Now this enemy actually has poison. Poison deals one damage at turn start. That's really the strength of that deck. And it's ranged, right? It is. So it can hit me from here. So I'm actually gonna, gonna do this. And then I'm going to keep this unit rooted so that he can't attack me from there. I think he won't be able to reach there. You'll probably attack here. And then on my next turn, I'm just going to go boom, boom. You get two energy per hero per turn. I'll smack you and kill you. And then you'll probably poison me next turn. But at least I'll have taken out this one four energy. Oh, no. All right. We're, we're definitely going to lose this game. You're going to think that I'm joking. This is the first duel I've actually lost. Of course, it has to happen on video. I have been steamrolling, and this happens, I'm sure everybody's had an experience like this. I've been steamrolling so hard that I actually thought that I descended in intelligence. I was like, is everybody else just stupid and I'm now a genius? Because usually that's reversed. It appears that that's not the case. Gnome Wrecker. Excuse me? His name is Masked Gamer. Uh... KO a hero with two or less. So for four energy, we can kill him, but that's pretty expensive. We can still summon our Viridian. It only does two damage, though. And uh, it, again, it's more of a support play. We can... I, okay, I like this a little bit more. Let's put a Gnome Wrecker down. When it dies, we gain energy. It's like a mana generator for us. Um, and I'm going to put you here. And you're going to say, what about this guy? Well, I'm going to use some removal. Dust Devil sends a hero to a random position. It takes two damage. So this will kill this unit. And also teleport it. Now, it actually is important uh, to note where the corpses are. This is a weapon, by the way. It can only be applied to a hammer hero. But we'll talk about that when we get into deck construction. I'm probably going to do another duel after this to reassert the fact that I'm not terrible at the game. All right, deal th one piercing damage to three random units. They did break my crystal, but we have survived, except now they're going to use their innate trait to poison this unit, and he's going to die at the start of my turn. Um, but yeah, the corpses matter, because you actually, you can corpse stomp on this guy, and if you don't do that, it's possible that within one turn you could be resummoned by a necromancer or something like that. So, all players draw a hero or building card from their deck, it costs negative five. We kind of got to try at this point, I think. I've drawn a fungal cohort. Eulogy, draw a fungal cohort from your deck. Okay, it's a 2-4. Which is actually really nice. So we might not be dead yet. I'm going to attack this guy. There's revenge, so he's going to attack right after. And then uh, I'm going to use flatten just to crush him. And then we have no energy, so we'll pass turn. I do feel like we're, we're pretty far behind the curve here, but if we could start to get some kind of board presence, I'd, I'd be okay with it. But, you know, the fact that I'm having to rush uh, what I'm talking about and also my turns here is actually indicative of, I think, a very positive change with Hero Academy 2 versus Hero Academy 1. Hero Academy 1 was strategic, tactical, methodical. And that's all well and good, but for someone like me, who is perhaps, uh, you know, if I may... Uh, denigrate myself a little bit, uh, a little bit more impatient. This mostly led to me being frustrated with my enemies because I'm like, hey, I, I don't have all day here. I want to finish a game. I don't want to be carrying 12 concurrent games every month. I'd rather just do one finish, do one finish, do one finish, etc., etc. So, um, uh, like I said, a lot of board presence here for me as he slowly destroys me and dismantles me completely. Um,. Can't play it there. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's think about this. So we can fungal cohort. I think we may actually lose on our next turn. We might as well destroy some units in the interim period. It's so dangerous to be on one HP around this guy because you know he has this poison ability that essentially does one damage for two energy. So all he has to do is get you close to lethal, and then you're in trouble. It's like, this is not even a good turn for us. It just might stave off uh, 
Oblivion for a little bit here. We could play some Bramble, but I think I'd rather just have Stoneling out there. Anyway. So yeah, the, the fact that, um, I mean, not only are turns like about a minute long each, it's also only 12 turns per match. I forgot, this guy has Swipe, so he does damage in an AoE. Um, there's, a, there's only 12 turns. Once you get to the 12th turn, they start giving you cards that deal direct damage to crystals. So really, at this point, it, it's almost impossible for me to swing it back in all likelihood because I'd have to do so within the next few turns. And now he's probably going to poison me. That's what I would do. And I'm undefeated with a Dark Elf deck. Oh, no. Seething Sniper. It's also a good card. Range units, very strong. This is my bad for selecting the incorrect deck uh, to to deal with here. Can I say a good game, my friend? I'll just it, emote to indicate my anger at the present moment. Um, well, let, let's put up the old college try, shall we? Um Oh, he gave me a little cheeky smiley face. So I played a, uh, a Bramble. This is, I guess, one of the strengths of the uh, the deck here as the Warden, is that you can actually, uh, your buildings have plus one HP. So we, we only drew one building card because we're using the starter deck, and perhaps we don't have necessarily all the gas that we'd like to have in order to make this happen. But uh, we got this, this Bramble that can at least impede his movement for a little bit. He still might be able to hit it once. No, he can hit me once, though. And then if he hits me, back up, hit me, poison me. I like how I'm playing my opponent's turn for him at this point. You wouldn't. You, I told you, he's a god. No, I mean, fair play to him. Admittedly. Uh, the, the, this is the deck that you'll see us using next time, except I think he's got a couple of nudges in it, which I don't have. Um, but anyway, you'll see it when it happens. Okay, now you just, dude, you got lethal on the next turn. Can you just stop BMing, please? Like... Bunny patrol. Summon a bunny clone on a random nearby tile. I might as well just end turn and let him hit me. Now we'll determine. He doesn't know all eyes are on him. Will he go for the attack? He will. Okay. GG. I, excuse me. I'd like to say G. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not upset. That's fine. All right. So immediately I feel the need to save face. But you just noticed, you know, that was like a 10 minute long match here. So it's really good for quick fixes of this kind of strategic gameplay that you don't always get um, in the original Hero Academy. I think it's a positive change to keep the game a little bit more frenetic. So I've actually, it says Dark Elf Starter, but I've actually made like one or two uh, ad hoc changes here. By the way, you know, as with most of the sponsor stuff, I, I have been given in-game uh, currency, but as we, whenever I do this stuff, like I did the same thing for Lineage, I, I just didn't take advantage of it because uh, I don't want to give you guys a, oh, it's the same dude! I don't want to give you guys a, you know, a, a necessarily unrepresentative opinion of, of what things will be like, uh, you know, in your first few hours, so. Oh, that, he might take that as, uh, offensive. Okay, so now we're playing as the, um, I can't believe it, the game is, is out for negative one days, and this guy's already part of a clan, or maybe he's just from Finland. Which is really like being part of the Finnish clan, when you think about it. This is, um, the, uh, Dark Elf deck. And the way that the Dark Elf deck works is that it's a uh, poison focus. So you can poison heroes for uh, two energy, which does one damage at the start of their next turn. So any unit on one HP can easily be lethal. Just let me, uh, well, actually, I'm going to do something different here. I'm also going to use our, our secondary ability, which costs zero. It does one damage to each of your crystals, or it does uh, an amount of damage spread out over your crystals, and it gives you one energy as a result. And then I'm going to summon this Void Monk. I'm not going to move him. I'm going to let him summon something. The Void Mug is 2 and 5, which is, like, by itself stronger than any creature we were able to summon in our last game. Uh, and it also has Swipe, so it attacks in, like, an arc. 1 damage to 3 random targets. Poison Hero. That's not that bad, honestly. I mean, we, we can't do anything about it, but it's not that bad yet. So we should have moved this guy on an earlier turn. We'll put him here for now. He's probably dead next turn, but he soaked up a lot of energy. We are a little behind, of course. Um, I think Fist of the Gods is great to have on the next turn. If we play Ragebringer, which has two in Rage, it's one in five right now, one attack, five life. Um, but if it gets hit once, it'll gain age, it'll gain uh, power, and if it gets hit again, it'll gain power. So. I'm not going to use Void Poke because I want to keep Fist of the Gods available for our next turn. But I imagine this guy's probably close to being dead. We'll see. So far, it's a much better start, though. 
Power Steel is also amazing. You can take energy or take uh, damage from a hero and give it to another hero. So you can really use this if there's a unit that has like a maybe one power and a bunch of defense. You just take it down to zero power, and you also have buffed your other unit in the meantime. So. So far, I mean, we'll, we'll probably play a game with the, um, no, that's gonna kill this guy. We'll probably play a game with the, um, the council faction as well, which is a little bit more of a traditional sort of like Arthurian sword and board sort of thing. Well, let's start by doing a little bit of damage for the first time ever. Uh, but really, the Dark Elf deck is the one that I've had the most success with. So in theory, if we had a Necromancer, which is a 6 energy card that we just didn't draw, um, we could place him like here, and then resummon this guy as a Phantom, which is a 1-1, uh, basically just cannon fodder. But still, you can summon him for free, and it doesn't end your turn. Normally, attacking ends your turn. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting play. We're going to summon a Spiderling here, and we'll move the Spiderling in. I think we've got um, the benefit of aggression. We'll also summon a Gurgle Pot, which is just a ranged unit right now. I think when it dies, it also deals one area damage. Yeah, so uh, all tiles that touch this will take one damage when this dies, which is very dangerous for this guy. Yeah. Time for so essentially, if you just poison this... This spider is gonna die, and I'm gonna look like a, a dang fool. But we're actually not in as bad of a situation as you might expect. That was a really poor play for me. Um, Cause check this out. We're gonna poison you, and I kind of want to power steal you, but I'm not sure if you're gonna live long enough. Or I'm not sure if our enraged unit is gonna live long enough to make that worthwhile. Instead, um, we could apply rancid blade here. But if we do so, uh, it's it's going to poison this unit, which means they're going to die pretty soon after. So I think I'm actually just going to go for a swipe. We'll keep hitting the crystal there. And then... Um... <laughs> uh... There you go. Check it out. We got banter. Through emotes only. You know, 90% of communication is nonverbal or something. Um... I think, I think we're just going to make a Tomb Crawler. I think we're going to crush our own corpse by coming up here. And we can't use Power Steel anymore. We could use Void Poke, but I think we might as well save our energy. So we've got a pretty nice amount of board control right now, but there's a couple of cards that can swing it. Most of the time, though, it is like, um, if you can establish an early advantage... This is only like my 7th or 8th game online, but if you, it seems like if you can establish an early advantage, then you have a, uh, a huge leg up on the opposition. It, it, you're always playing catch up, and that creates problems. So yeah, this unit's gonna be poisoned. I'm glad I saved some of our uh, earlier resources. But as bad as this might look, I'm actually not very concerned because uh, I mean they only had two energy left over. We've done well. Actually, we have less life than they do, but now we're tied, and we've got tempo. So we do have our Necromancer right now. This is a legendary tier card. I'm not sure if we can get in range to summon... Uh... In fact, I'm, I'm fairly confident we can't get in range to summon our... friend there. I might have been able to if I went here. But I'm just going to keep myself like here. I don't want to make myself too exposed. Because if this unit dies... It's not a terrible thing, but... Um, it also has chain, which means that if we can buff this unit via like a power steal, chain is like a chain lightning attack. So if you shoot something, uh, it'll jump to one nearby target if there's something close enough that, that fits the bill. So if we can steal an enemy's damage and give it to our necromancer and then do a chain attack, uh, we got a good setup. And that's the thing, it, it, it's a little bit like, um, I, I would say that it's fair to suggest that it has some duelist, if not influence, at least it's a contemporary to, uh, to duelist. There's a little bit more, at least in my experience so far, of comboing. Oh, you're gonna poison me. Wow, that's a good turn. Alright. That was well played. Uh, let me think about this for a second. We can get to 7 energy if we have to. I think I'd rather just destroy you and do some more damage here. 
but it does give them tempo now, I'd say. We really want to play Seething Sniper. It's a really good card. If it gets enraged... Like, range is already good because a lot of the units are melee, but if you um, make a unit enraged, it does more damage. And then we have weapons that can also apply to units uh, as long as they have the right kind of weapon type. So if we find a bow weapon, we can use that on Seething Sniper and... Uh, he could start doing three damage per turn, potentially. Fang Glider's a really good card. It's just a mobile, um... A mobile unit here. We didn't draw the cards we were hoping to draw, unfortunately. Um... Now, here's something I actually don't know. Can I kill you... Via the poison if I attack you once. I'm gonna try a void poke first one damage to a random enemy It hit that guy since he's already poisoned. He's already dead So I'm gonna choose to just keep doing one damage there, which is probably not an extremely strong play Seething Sniper. Yeah, the problem is, if we play Seething Sniper, my dude is extremely killable in one turn. But I'm gonna do it anyway. How is he extremely killable in one turn? This might be a little dicey. Um, all you need to do is attack me and then poison me. And then you still have five energy left, or three energy left, to do whatever you will. He didn't die because the armor defended him. So that was my own mistake there. I didn't think poison would work on armor. I was I was using slay the spire methodology. Okay. I mean, you got me by three right now. I don't get a revenge on him because we're adjacent and I'm a ranged unit. So uh, that's the way that works. But we are in rage now. Uh, never mind. We're dead. Yeah, I think he's gonna get us again. I went into this video. I had a positive impression. Then the dang matchmaking put me up against ESL 1's number one Hero Academy 2 player. I will not abide. So all of our units are now dead. And we're in uh, we're in sincere trouble. Like really sincere trouble. We can kill a damaged enemy easily. Two energy kills the phantom. This guy won't die. He's something's got to hit him. But if we hit him with the fang glider, we're gonna die in the process. You, you see my conundrum now. Oh, this is just terrible. Okay, hear me out here. You you have to die. I think you have to die. Uh, there's no reason to poison you. I don't believe it stacks. So we're just gonna... It, it's extremely unfortunate. Because this dude is still alive. We gotta find a way to hurt him. I could have lost energy and tried to poison him again. I could have lost en or could have lost power on my crystals and tried to hit him with the soul stab to kill him or something like that. But the dude only does two damage. So it seemed a little dicey to me to do so. But now he's got like such ridiculous board control. What we want is a ranged unit to get summoned, and then we'll just dust him. I should have recorded this video between 2 to 3 a.m. last night, uh, when I was just stomping. Now, I didn't realize I'd accidentally gotten myself embroiled in a clan match. Biting hail. Deal one damage to all enemy heroes. Sadly, this guy is is all buffed up now. You still have to do it. I really don't want to let this guy live. But I can't really afford to <laughs> hurt my crystal, so I guess I will. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna lose this one as well. We might as well give him the GG early. He can beat us, but I want him to at least know that we know that he's gonna beat us. He's not taking us by surprise. After this, maybe we'll do some uh, versus AI stuff. I think this is a pretty good proof of concept of uh, you know what the Hero Academy 2 experience online has been like. 
Hopefully, when you play, you don't end up rolling up against Finn Dralnu, who is uh, apparently a master of the original. And, uh, oh, now we draw gas. Amazing. Hello, it's Terminus. Uh, it me, Terminus. Right, we actually need to hurt ourselves to summon it, so... Yeah. At least we went out with class. Whatever. That was our only chance, regardless. Alright, we're rank 17. It works on like a Hearthstone style ranking system. I started at rank 20 and uh, will remain at rank 17 for the rest of my life. Okay, so apart from that, um, what do you get in uh, Hero Academy 2? Well, there are uh, challenges. There's quests. Quests give you gold. Gold gives you the ability to buy packs. Gems give you the ability to buy better packs. Potions or energy give you the ability to craft cards of uh, varying rarities. Uh, based on the amount of potions you have. Ranging from like, I think it costs... Well, I mean, we can just see it here if we go to our, um... Our crafting area, which I believe is from the home menu. Uh, you can make a basic card in 15 minutes with 8 energy. Rare card is 25 energy in 1 hour. A legendary card takes 1800 energy in 1 day. So if I keep losing against... Finn Narlu... I think I would only have to get another three or four hundred losses in a row. But who knows, if you can actually eke out a win, you might have a genuine chance there. Uh, it's ink, by the way, not energy. So, I don't know, let's, uh... No, that, that won't be necessary. I will come back. Apart from that, um, there's campaigns. And actually, this is something that was uh, apparently requested in Hero Academy 1. is a little bit more robust of a single-player campaign. Uh, and this game, actually, you can play completely from a single-player uh, campaign context if you want. It will cost you some gems in the process, though. Uh, which you can earn through in-game play, but uh, it's probably a little bit cost-prohibitive, is my guess. It seems like, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing where you might want to put in a couple bucks instead to unlock it if you're interested. The challenges have been dusting me to an extreme degree. Let's start with, um... Let's start with, like, a council challenge here. These are, like, one-off uh, puzzles that are curated and it's actually probably the easiest way to gain packs in the game as well, because if you do eight of these, you get one pack. And then you can start to, you know, put those nudge cards in your deck that give you an unfair advantage over me. I kid. Swedish Narwhal, you're the greatest player a man could ever ask for. Uh, gear up your heroes with weapons and lead them to victory. Okay. So you, you don't always have to win in one turn. Weapons are a key council strategy. They give a permanent bonus to heroes who are able to equip them. There are four different weapon types. Sword, hammer, bow, and staff. These guys are going to do 10 damage on their turn. So we have two turns, essentially. I think this is an automatic one. You apply the sword to the sword individual. The bow to the bow individual. The hammer to the hammer individual. And the pokey scepter to the scepter individual. And then... You hit. You hit. You hit. And we'll just come over here. We can hit next turn. So this will be an easy victory for us. Not all of them are this easy. We'll play through a couple of them so you can see what's going on here. Uh, I think, it, especially the more I play games like Slay the Spire. Oh, you know, we can replace this with new weapons. The more I'm like, any game that is uh, predicated upon a PvP online needs some kind of bulwark that I can sink my time into once I've lost enough games in a row and gotten frustrated. So something like this, where you can make progress, you know, you have actionable items is maybe the way I'll describe it. You lost to somebody, you're like, ah, I need some more juice for my deck. I need cards. I don't want to lose against um, Scandinavian pros all day. What am I going to do? Play some challenges, get some packs, and hope for the best. Draw two random weapon cards. Gain one mana if behind, gain two mana. We're ahead, unfortunately. This turn, plus two to hero with custom weapon. Plus two attack, I should say. Rancid Blade. Plus two energy. Uh, plus two uh, damage. So, Rancid Blade is a good play here. It gives us more damage. And now we have enough to lethal. I, we, we probably did earlier. This is three damage, but it's actually more because this unit has an ability called Smash, which leads them to do more damage to uh, buildings. All right, so that was easy enough. Got a hundred gold, a little bit of experience. You do also unlock more challenges, and uh, the first few campaigns are unlocked uh, just by leveling up, essentially by playing against the AI, which is nice because you actually get three deck archetypes. Uh, 
you know, just by playing yourself. You don't have to sink any cash into the game. Learn about powers and what the council can do with them. Who are you? Powers are spells that can be cast once per turn. Ah, uh, so yes. You know, I'm gonna step ahead of you. I just gotta let you know, I'm almost like a professional player. The I might be the second best player in the world. I've only lost to one person. That's all I'm saying. What are you? Sir Baldric Aura gives plus one damage. So he's buffing his uh, adjacent minions, and he's armored for two, which is actually a ton. Uh... I think I'm going to try to create a legendary swordsman. I don't know if this is the right way to solve this, but we'll see. So they've moved away from their leader. Well, some of them have moved away from their leader, which is great news for me. Would I rather have one unit that does three damage or two units that do two damage? If all units, if all of the things are equal, I think we'd rather do like, well, we could make one god unit, especially because this guy's armor is going to be annoying. We'd like to pierce it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to try this. You're going to get smacked. I'm gonna try this. You're gonna get smacked. I've made a, a bold miscalculation at this point. Yes, sir. Let me run some numbers on this for a sec. Come over here. Hit you for three. You go down to two. I go down to one. I heal up. I still die. I think we play a little bit more defensive. And then we use our leftover energy to... Uh... Oh, none of our units need healing because they just lost their armor. Yeah, I think I might have messed this challenge up. We'll see. Heal hero for one. Thanks to the aura, we have lost... It. Oh, he's going for the crystal! Uh, I actually think I've lost. Yeah, I can't get to him. See, like if I... I, I need two turns to get over there, so I am actually a moron. Okay, let's try this one again. Like I said, for someone who might be the second best player on Earth, this is a little embarrassing. I got high hopes, though. All right, maybe we're going to try to create one GAD unit at the front lines. So we just want to prevent this guy from getting past us. It seems like we should probably be taking out this guy first. You're going to hit for two. Yes, sir. I still... I like it. Because this guy is not getting any aura bonuses unless he can get past us. And then if we could just... We actually can just surround this guy and start to whittle him. And he, that's going to stop him at least from getting to the crystal. Um, so all these guys are super close to death, but he's been permanently wounded unless they use medic on him. Um, and you could kill me. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to heal this guy up, and I'm going to force you to get me. As bad as this might seem, I think it's actually highly, highly good. Never mind. Um, because of the aura bonus, he got past us there. That's okay. That's okay, dude. What's the game plan here? <laughs> It's an actually great question. I'm going to try to buff this guy up and we're going to take him on 2v1. He didn't move, so I'm happy with that, but... You could die in one... So I think we got to go like this. Like this. We're just buying ourselves some time. 
Where are you going? You going into the? Th he's going into the thick of it. I think we got him now. Oh, I still think we got him. All right. So look at that. I've ascended to pure genius level. Probably, uh, if we had bronze, silver, and gold, that would rank as about a, a tin medal in the Olympics of Hero Academy 2, but we've gotten it done. And you know what? I'm going to do one more while we're here. You know, it's, it's like any puzzle. Sometimes you find yourself doing well on difficult ones and doing terrible on easy ones. Use council spells to heal and re uh, revive and heal your allies. Okay. Use the Medic Power and the Cleric to heal your revived heroes and keep them fighting. These guys are pretty weak, so I'm not overly concerned. Triage. Revive hero to three. Revive ally to one. Uh, definitely, you should be revived to three. Because you're on the front lines. You're not in a dangerous spot at all yet. And you are ranged to begin with, so you only need one. So I'm going to hit you with that goodness. What do you do? Range, chain, one heal. So if we heal you... We'll heal two units simultaneously. Nice. Uh, and then we'll, I think we'll let them come to us. That's the benefit of having a ranged unit. I think we got this one easy. Like, you're actually already dead. And then you're... I mean, you could get to a crystal, but you can't attack it on the next turn. So I'm, like, uh, very unconcerned. Buff you up a little bit. Heal you a little bit. And then, really, I, I leave it up to you. Yes. On my way. Yes. Feel better. If you want to just attack your unit into mine and then die, that's ideal. Thank you. Get up to 950 gold. So the last thing we should show off here is uh, deck construction. Now that we finish this, uh, if you go back here, you can see our current deck, which is the Dark Elf Starter. But we actually, if we go to our cards, we can change around our existing deck. So we already have the Dark Elf Starter, the Council Starter, and the Warden Starter, but we can create a new one. And sure, Sergeant Pasta, that seems like a wonderful name. Let's create a Council deck. And there's a little bit of a uh, a guidance system. I didn't actually realize that there were multiple powers. Heal hero for one is great. Sorry, get rid of uh, get rid of this and take medic. I think we've we can make a deck with more hammer heroes than sword heroes if we try. And that's nice about the original uh, or not the original. Sorry, but the the customized deck construction is that. The decks for uh, starting out are a little bit jack of all trades. Like, you have an ability that buffs sword heroes, but you might have a hammer hero you draw turn one. So, in this way, we could construct it with a little bit more uh, synergy, is the idea. Now, my card collection is like highly, highly, highly incomplete. But let's start with uh, our, our favorite heroes here. So, we want hammer heroes. So, let's put some rooks in here, put three of those. Bow Maidens are just lovely. I think the Gurgle Pot is kind of unnecessary. Pride Protector, 2-2 two, two for 3 that has a eulogy is okay, but really only if you have tempo, I think. Arranged with an aura is good. I also think Attack Pony is really nice. When it, uh, when it moves, it gets plus 2 damage on the next turn. Terminus is almost essential, I think. And I think two of those is fine. And then, let's start adding in some uh, weapons. Like, Gladius Arc, super useful for archers. Hammer time. Draw a random hammer, it costs one less. Hammer hero gains one energy. Uh, Quartermaster is okay. It's basically like you draw a weapon card. Oh, but a weapon card from your deck. So this is going to draw a Gladius Arc like every single time right now. Um, enemy can no longer revenge is super nice for ensuring that you get good trades. Mithril undies, undies I do not like. 
Destroying it, a strong enemy I love. Reviving an ally can be good, especially on ranged units. Uh, damaged ally getting stronger is good. Topple, I mean, I guess if you're fighting a, a warden deck, maybe, that has buildings. Uh, Dust Devil, I think, is great. Fist of the Gods is removal. Biting Hail is decent damage. And then give me some suggestions. Topple, gear up, or siege barrels. We could use uh, some more equipment, maybe. Ranged hero gains plus three life. Set their movement to zero. Eh, it could be fun. Let's give it a shot. Uh, let's take smelling salts again. Winged sandals. And I don't know what necessarily want to take more of this, but uh, draw a random spell with mana cost equal to target hero. I kind of like that. We have one more card to go. I guess Mithril Undies. Now, I'm not convinced that this deck is any good. But perhaps we'll find out at a later date. For now, it's just a little bit of a, an overarching view of the robust systems in Hero Academy 2. We played a few games. We did some challenges against the AI. We showed off deck building. We showed off uh, getting our butt kicked by a Latvian esports athlete. And now comes the call to action. You can pick up the game uh, on Android, on PC, on iOS. Links for that will be in the video description below. There is uh, an affiliate code or a referral code you can enter. I believe it's NLion, but I'll put that in the video description once I, uh, once I have my people get the particulars. I believe it gives you one premium pack so you can get your Hero Academy 2 career started. Uh, I'll see you online. Please be nicer to me than Henrik Sedin was. Because he he really crushed a lot of my momentum early in this video. I was kind of expecting it would go up and everyone would be like, Wow, NL's actually good at a game. Instead, we ended up playing against, uh, you know, this game's version of Hafu. And my self-confidence has been undermined. But in any case, Hero Academy 2 versus the original. More CCG, TCG elements and much, much faster actual matches. So you can conceivably finish them in a, you know the amount of time it takes to have half your lunch break or something like that. Nice little bite-sized bite strategic action that uh, looks casual perhaps, but actually is a good deal of strategy going on under the hood. And uh, you know all the uh, agnostic skills you get from having played other tactics games, plus the stuff that you've learned by playing Hearthstone, Duelist, etc., etc., uh, combined to make this uh, you know, something that I believe has a pretty high skill ceiling. For now, it's available for free. Thanks for watching. This is a sponsored video. Thank you to Robot Entertainment for supporting the channel. And providing us with a look at of uh, Hero Academy 2 today. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Go peep the game. I'll see you next time.